You are watching Shoutcraft, exciting entry-level esports commentary with myself, Total Biscuits. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shoutcraft right here, bringing you a matchup between LZ Gamer in the Red Trunks playing Terran here on the Metalopolis versus his opponent, Arcane, in the Blue Trunks playing Protoss. Looking forward to this one. Like I say, thank you to Arcane for sharing these replays with us and the StarCraft 2 community at large on the Team Liquid forums. This is where this is coming from, so big props to him. And, of course, thank you for entertaining tens of thousands of people because I think, you know, isn't that the greatest gift that a player can actually give? It's just fantastic. It's wonderful. I love players that are willing to do that. It just shows a certain degree of character. Huge fan. Arcane kicks it off with the pylon on 9 supply. No big surprises for anyone right there. Again, if you're a newbie Protoss player, just watch the timing. Watch the timing. Watch the timing. That's going to finish right about now. Just one second before that. Straight into the chrono boost. That's how you do it, folks. That is how you do it. The mark of a truly great player. LZ Gamer keeping his cards close to his chest. Building his supply depot quite close to his mineral line. Incredibly close, in fact. Looking to perhaps play what's called a little bit of Sim City. Sounds like jargon, but in reality, it's more of a metaphor. Like, oh, you're playing Sim City. Well, he's building his buildings in a certain way to try and prevent some kind of harassment. Barracks at the front. No, no point really creating a wall right here to block off against the Protoss. It just doesn't work out so well. Much better against the Zerg. Arcane with a little bit of fisticuffs looking for some harassment. Unfortunately, pushed away by LZ Gamer's ACV that says, Not today, Sunny. We don't want any of your kind in here. We don't serve your kind in here. What? Your probes. We'll have to wait outside. We don't want them here. Goddamn racist Terran bars. Barracks all the way up. Now, what's Arcane getting up to? Well, it's got an assimilated sword out. Pylon straight away. You know, I really should actually turn that off, shouldn't I? The problem is I can't see it because it's below my goddamn replay bar. Oh, no. Yeah, I can see it. Of course. What a tard. There we go. Suddenly, <laughs> no more harassment. Okay. So I have an next score coming up right here. And his opponent sorting out his command center with the orbital command center upgrade very quickly. Oh, no. He's got guns. Help. Help. Too late. Reactor straight away for LZ Gamer. Ha, ah, interesting. Looking for some marine play, perhaps. Second barracks, yep. Marines Marauders early on in the game. No doubt about that, it does work. I used to have a strategy where all I built was marines, and if the marines weren't enough, I GG'd. It's still not my Protoss strategy, where I build nothing but stalkers, and if my stalkers aren't enough, I GG. But then again, I wouldn't recommend following any of my advice when it comes to tra strategy like that. It's fairly terrible. Simon X goes straight into the warp gate. Chrono boosting out a stalker initially. He wants rid of that SCV, but he can't do it just yet. He's a little bit more firepower, ranged firepower particularly. One assimilator, two assimilator for Arcane. Hmm. Lots of gas early on. All sorts of possibilities for that. Perhaps Blink Stalkers. Could work. Perhaps going for some robotics again. A possibility. No, SCV. Not happening. Absolutely not. Ah, more marines. Are we getting more reactors? No, we're getting the tech lab, so we're looking for upgrades, as you might imagine. And also an engineering bay coming straight up. Very quick, very quick. Now, what's he going to do with that? Well, I think plus one weapon upgrade, perhaps. There you go, straight into it. Looking for a lot of firepower early on in the game. Not even actually bothering with marauders, just marine ball for the time being. Now, the marine ball, it's not a dance, as you might think. Now, would you really want to see one of these guys in the pretty frock? I think not. Disgusting way to think, you deviants. Now, in reality, a marine ball is a ball of marines. Yeah, shocking, I know. Not exactly what I class as jargon. Three gateway. Again, possibly going into a robotics facility after this, looking for Colossus. Don't see why not. Certainly a possibility and a fast expansion. Fast enough, anyway, for the Protoss. Is it a slow expansion, a medium speed expansion? I don't know. Should I start using musical terms for this? It's an Allegro expansion. It's a Presto expansion. That's what we should go for. I should start using Italian musical terms just to confuse people. It's like, it's, it's a new kind of jargon for people that know quite a bit about musical theory. So you're right, it's here. You see EG Machine building a Presto expansion as opposed to a Lento expansion. Allegro expansion coming up for LZ Gamer. That would be awful. <laughs> Moderato. God. It's been a while since I've actually played a musical instrument, but hey, there you go. Still remember a few things. Three gateways straight into robotics facility. Indeed, looking for the possibility of Colossi. That should counter this quite well, but it'll take him a little bit of time to get it rolling. The question is, is LZ Gamer going to get aggression? 
Is he gonna get aggression? Is he gonna get aggressive? Both of these are possible, perhaps even at the same time. 11 Marines, single Marauder. Two Marauders now up. Way more pumping out on both sides. Stimpack upgrade. Not looking to try and time his attack by the looks of it, although he's going straight in now. He could have gone in a little bit earlier because that would have all been fixed up and ready to go in the meantime. And he does have some options. He's got his concussive shells coming up for his Marauders. A little bit of slowy down ability. Not enough to grab that Stalker, though, in the meantime. And he's also got Factory coming up as well. All sorts of possibilities. Keeping nice and flexible. Investing initially into that force of biological units. The Marines and the Marauders. A lot of firepower available here. Let's see just what he can do. Thing is, look at that. Arcane Warps in a significant force. Little, I don't think that's going to do all that much. He can certainly look for the... But look at the, look at the mix he's got on, going on right here. He needs to bring up the Guardian Shield as well. There's the Stimpak. Takes a few kills in the process. But the thing is, he's going to get nailed down here if he's not too careful. He knows it and he's backing the hell off. What are the losses looking like? Well, he yeah, he lost quite a few there. No doubt about that. Can he catch a sentry? Try and even the odds. Yes, he can. But he gets blocked in and he's going to lose another Marine and another Marine. Bit of back and forth going on right here. But it's so very dangerous to try and engage the Protoss like that. He's able to snipe off a Zealot though. Give him credit where credit is due. Able to take down more units this time, and he actually takes the lead. Straight into Colossi. That's exactly what he's looking for. Three gateway into Colossi. Four gate now. And he's got an expansion that is what I would call relatively secure for the time being. He's also popped an observer out to see what he can see. Question is, what is his opponent going to do in response? Well, he's looking just for more barracks. He saw how much damage he was able to do, but he's also bringing the starport out, which indicates to me he's going to break out some medivacs as well to back them up. That would be logical. The marines and marauders and medivac strategy is a popular one. It's a basic one. It's very easy to learn, but it's very effective. Might as well throw out a couple of bunkers right here as well, just to give him a little bit more in terms of his defensive abilities. Oh, an armory coming up as well for LZ Gamer. Interesting. I do wonder. I do wonder. Tech Lab. Siege Tank's a possibility. Or he could be simply swapping over. Medivac back coming right here. Now. A single Colossi on its way for Arcane. Arcane playing very passively right now. He knows he's pretty secure for the time being. Terran aren't really rolling to their fullest extent quite yet, but they will be at this rate. He's already got three barracks up. Another tech lab looking to build more Marauders this time around as opposed to Marines. It's a good idea as well. I have to wonder, did he see the Colossi? No, he didn't. Hasn't even spotted the robotics facility. So he's not quite aware of that just yet. Extended Thermal Lance upgrade coming up for Arcane as well. Wants to get a little bit of reach. Length matters, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Yes, it does. Now. Arcane. Are you simply going to sit there the entire game and wait? Well, why not? Like I say, he is secure. Five gateways right now. More Colossi coming out. Thor's coming out for LZ Gamer, though. We saw the armory coming up earlier. I had to wonder if he was going to bother with that. But hey, that would give him a lot of firepower. Now, LZ Game is not just going to sit idle. Absolutely not. And indeed, why would he? He's looking to try and get a little bit of an advantage right there. Hmm, that was spotted. Is he going to take out the pylon? Yes, he is. However, that makes Arcane at least aware that LZ Gamer has dropship capability. And that he's roaming around with it. So he's going to keep his forces a little bit closer to his chest. He's got a third expansion, second expansion even, third base. Back up with the simulators as well. He could be looking to try and build two Colossi at once right now. And that would be five gas and possibly six coming up. That's a lot of gas, ladies and gentlemen. Awful lot of gas. Sniping off yet more pylons, but Arcane does seem to have those in abundance. But at least it stops Arcane 1 from getting scouting information from those areas. And 2 from having the ability to warp in surprises. Hallucination, Arcane. Oh, you know how to get me all excited, considering I barely ever see that. Hallucination is an interesting ability. Basically, create hallucin hallucinations of various different units. Allows you to appear larger than you actually are. Hmm, yes. Don't know if hallucination quite works on women. Actually, I think it does, but I'm fairly sure it's illegal. Here comes the drop at the rear of the base. Arcane has an awful lot to respond to it with, though. But he's going to lose a couple of pylons in the process. One down. Not even bothering to respond just yet. Needs to warp in a couple more units to make sure he doesn't lose any. Thing is, he's going to be able to jump out there straight away. Is he going to look to hold the line? Yeah, he's going for it. 
Nice little bit of micromanagement there with a single Marauder, able to hold off all of those Zealots. Absolutely fantastic. Can he grab the other one? No, he can't. Problem is he's got more pressure. One day. Oh, nicely done. Takes out two Zealots. Through. Oh, yeah. Third Zealot as well for a loss of a single Marine. An excellent drop there by LZ Gamer. No doubt about that. Now, that is what I call a discount. Look at that. Look at what LZ Gamer has managed to do. He is inflicting heavy losses on his opponent, and his opponent is barely able to respond. However, Arcane is patient. Did it reveal, more to the point, the presence of Colossi? No, it did reveal robotics, but it didn't. Yes, I did spot it. There you go. He has seen it now. He has Thor's coming up in response to that. Be able to inflict an awful lot of firepower. That is not something I would like to meet in a dark alley. But I'll tell you, it would have to be a damn big dark alley. Ho. Oh, yes. That is lethal. A lot of expansion on the way. Spotted by Arcane. Is he going to respond to it? No, he's just going to be patient. Maybe not. In comes the army. For the army for the ages, folks. What have we got? We have four colossi. We have 18 stalkers. Six sentries and seven zealots. I have a wonder about the economy right now. Arcane's streaming ahead. This is what he's been waiting for. He's looking to get that economic advantage, and he now has it. And he's about to inflict it in the most painful way imaginable. You know what to say, folks. Put your money where your mouth is. It's exactly what Arcane's about to do. Look at that. I would not want to meet that. That is dangerous. However, he is up against four Thors. LZ Gamer ready to respond to this. Has the force been scouted? Not as far as I'm aware. Proxy pylon coming out to replace the dead one. And that is... <laughs> yeah, that ain't going anywhere, is it? Sorry. LZ Gamer, you're about to lose that, I'm afraid. Command center's going to be annihilated. Here comes the force from the side. Vikings as well to deal with the Colossi. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Laser fire all over the place. Incinerating Marines. Oh, that line is collapsing in a brutal, brutal fashion. Loses a single Colossus. Moves away from that. Coming in from the side of the Zealots. Looking for the Zealot charge around the side. Thor firepower coming in as well. Looking to try and bring those Thors down. He has to fall back, though. So many Marines and Marauders taken out with those Thors. He just didn't have the firepower to bring those down. A nice move there by LZ Gamer. He lost his initial... Well, some people don't like the word meat shield, but I'm going to use it anyway, because all I smelt there was roasted scorching meat. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's appropriate. Big losses. Massive losses for Arcane. In a situation now where he's going to have to fall back. Bear in mind, he still, still has a very significant economic advantage, and he was once again able to delay LZ Gamer's expansion, because look at this. Barely anything left in the main base. Whereas right now, Arcane's building his fourth base. Now the question is, can LZ Gamers try to equalize? Because, yeah, absolutely, he inflicted massive casualties on Arcane. But Arcane has a massive, massive bank account right now. He has an awful lot of resources at his disposal. He's already got three more Colossi up. Backed up by a force of Zealots and Stalkers. Zealots have the legs upgrade right now, as well as level two weapon upgrade. That's a lot of damage they can inflict. Fortifying his base around the side right there. Perhaps looking for a flanking attack. Where's he going to come from, though? Doesn't have any drop capability. Once again, LZ Gamer's dropship has scouted this particular Nexus. He can drop and take that out if he so desires, but he's not doing so quite yet. There are five Thors up for LZ Gamer right now. Still no weapon upgrade. Still concentrating on the infantry weapons. Aha! <laughs> Dark Templar coming up for Arcane as well. That'll be interesting. That'll shake things up a bit. Do we have any detectors? No, no, we do not. Where are those missile turrets? Seems to have neglected to build any. Hellion battle coming up as well with the infernal pre-igniter. That'll make short work of the zealots. Now, where are the armed forces of Arcana? What does he have, more to the point? Two immortals up. High Templar, a large number of them. High Templar will devastate those lines. They won't do too much damage to the Thors, but... That's still an awful lot of potential AoE firepower. LZ Gamer responds to those Colossi with a large force of Vikings. Got a lot in the air right now. Still got the advantage in terms of firepower, but the longer he waits, the worse it's going to be. Drop around the back. Crushed incredibly fast. But at least he now knows where his opponent actually has his armed forces. He's not defending any of these expansions in any major way. Dark Templar Shrine is now up. Is he bothering to inflict any upon his opponent? Not yet. Holding back with those. And here comes the force. Arcane is well aware of where it is and what's he going to do with it. Is he going to move to intercept? Delaying as much as he can. 
Holding on for energy on his dark on his high Templar. LZ Gamer with what I would class as a big ball of doom. He's going to throw that big ball of doom directly at Arcane. Will Arcane be able to hold the line? It's looking likely. Whoa, Archons, okay. The pop out some Archons as well, and why not? That's a lot of damage coming in. Here we go once again. Lasers flash their way through the front line of the meat shield. But again, can we bring the Thors down? That's the priority. Does he have the firepower for it? No, he doesn't. He really, really doesn't right now. Thors are still holding the line, but once again, reinforcements now coming in. In come the Zealots, and this is what's making the difference. This is definitely what's making the difference. Zealots throwing themselves into the line. Devastating damage to LZ Gamut. It's not quite enough, though. Can he take it? Yes, he can. He can grab that Immortal as well. Four Stork is not going to be enough to take out the remainder of that. Two Thors up. Immortal moving in. That Immortal's going to die incredibly fast. There it goes. A third Thor to back it up. Those Stalkers are going to fall. Archon's gone as well. Arcane certainly on the back foot. There's no way he's going to be able to defend this expansion right now. It's just not looking likely. And this could be the turning point for him. Yeah, he's had the economic advantage up to this point. But how good is that going to be if he keeps losing every encounter? You know, it's lost right here. Look at it. Look at the amount of resources lost by Arcane. It's a huge amount. That expansion's toast. Zealots charging. Looking to try and take a Thor. And they can take it. Successfully takes one Thor. And a grab. Nice grab there. Saves the Thors from destruction. Those Zealots were looking for it with a level 3 weapon upgrade. They're not going to get it. They're trying to chase him down. I wonder if he can grab them in midair. He just It's a shame he doesn't have anything to take them out with. If only, if only he had a little bit of feedback right there. But then again, they barely got any energy. It wouldn't make too much of a difference. Tries to create a defensive line right there with the Zealots. It's not good enough. Absolutely not. I don't know why he didn't just fall back right there. Loses a Thor for no apparent reason. He needs to get the hell out of there. Four Thors being built right now. You know what that means, folks. Four Thors equals four factories. Lord, of stuff being pumped out right there. Huge amount of firepower. He knows what he was able to inflict with it. What is the response from Arcane, though? Finally, we see those Dark Templar. Single missile turret in that line. Rest of it looking pretty vulnerable, potentially. There's the warp in. Zealot from the side. Wherever those Dark Templar. Keep an eye on your minimaps, folks. Proxy pylon spotted. Hmm, will the Zealot be able to take him out? No, not with the backup of three medevacs. That's certainly not going to happen. Oh, maybe you can. It's inflicting an awful lot of damage. The energy draining. No, nope, not happening. I'm going to lose that proxy pylon now as well. Now, arcane, arcane, arcane. What you going to do? You're certainly not going to be warping in there anytime soon. Missile turret's going up as well. Hasn't scouted Dark Templar, but he's going to put them there just in case. Also helps to detect the observers. Jesus, LZ Gamer, what is that? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the site of 12 Thors. Fairly unusual. Not a strategy I'm particularly familiar with, I must say. 12 Thors. Now, can Arcane respond to that? He's building immortals, but four immortals can't kill 12 Thors. That's just not happening. He's even got a little bit more in terms of the ground war right now. Look at that. Level 3 and level 2 in Marauder, Infantry Armor, and Weapons. <laughs> Here comes the response from Arcane, and scouted this time. He's also spotted the Dark Templar in the middle of that. That is a lot of Thors. I'm going to try and get the engagement on the high ground. They sound a single unit. Not quite enough. Thor splitting off to the side. Neither of them wanting to go in here because they know it's mutually assured destruction. Right now, Arcane does have a good force. Sniping at those Thors, doing a bit of area of effect damage. Now a big mobile force looking for a drop into the base. That could be dangerous. That's going to be very dangerous. There we go, straight in the middle of the base. That is devastating for Arcane. Arcane caught entirely off guard there. Is he going to base straight? It looks like he might have to. He's just going to have to let that one go, or is he? Trying to snipe it off. He can bring the Colossi up at least. But he's losing so many buildings. He's already lost one robotics and an awful lot of pylons going down left, right, and center. Buildings being destroyed in large amounts. Because the Colossi are now bringing their laser cannons to bear. And those are horribly, horribly toasted. Look at it. Ashes on the ground. Nothing but roast, roast marauder for you today. Oh, feedback right there as well. Second feedback. That expeditionary force of infantry annihilated. He did lose a lot of buildings there, but it's not devastating. Arkane still has good buildings there, and he's got the money to rebuild if need be. Doesn't lose too much. And now he's got his aircraft coming in. Still, those 12 Thors, though. Surprised LZ Gamer just isn't bringing the hammer down right here. 
Small scouting force in this medivac. Not going to be enough, though. No way. Unless they can take the pylon out. Surprised he doesn't go straight for the pylon, in fact. That would have taken out... Oh, there you go. Now he finally takes it out. All gone. All right, well, that expansion's boned unless he can move to intercept. He uses that as a little bit of a bait, and it's good. It's good. He's able to take one Colossi. Takes two. Takes a Void Ray as well. Now brings the hammer down. There, finally, that force. And will he have enough? There we go. Psystorm. One Thor torn apart. Second Thor torn apart. Psystorm in the middle right there. And Zealous charging in. And we've got the Dark Templar. Look at this. Look at the amount of damage done. That's eight Thors, nine Thors, ten, twelve. So much blood. Oh, he does it. He does it. Arcane crushes that attacking force. Wow, hero zealots, backed up by the Dark Templar, annihilate that force of Thors. Just goes to show, goes to prove, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't matter how many Thors you've got, it can still be beaten. And indeed, while that Psystorm might have not been, quote, effective per se, it certainly wore off a hell of a lot of HP in a big bunch of units. And now the counterattack comes in. And the question is, what does LZ have to counter it? And actually, not a lot. He's got three Thors up. He's got six Marines. Forces his way in on the Planetary Fortress. That Planetary Fortress will last... Well, it won't. There you go. Down it goes. Here comes the defensive force. Split it in two. That was a bit bad on the rear right there. Loses an Immortal. Loses a Void Ray as well. Archon moving in to back it up. Dark Templar still there. Size Storm. Two Size Storm. Rips through the armor of the Marines and the Marauders. Down they go. Charging the Zealots. Dark Templar to back it up. Dark Templar back it up and slice through the Thors. Oh, Wow. LZ Gamer on the back foot right now. That drop right there dealt with that expansion. Base trading at the moment, but Arcane still now with the upper hand. Able to crush not one, but two large armies. And you can see he's equalizing in terms of units lost. This is messy. Messy for LZ Gamer. LZ Gamer being drained of resources as well. He's got this base right here. Almost mined out here. Almost mined out here. Mm, it's dangerous. Arcane knows it. He smells blood. He's looking for the kill. He's already rebuilt his base. His potent force consists of the following. Six Dark Templar, 14 Zealots. Very highly upgraded. Very highly upgraded. Plus three for the weapons right there. He's got an Archon in there for good measure. He's got two Immortals. He has three Void Rays, six High Templar, seven Stalkers. And he's up against four Thors, 12 Marauders, and 11 Vikings with eight Marines. That is, as far as I'm concerned, a foregone conclusion if Arcane wants to bring the hammer down. I think what we've learned so far is that Arcane is an extremely patient player, as well as the fact that his economic mastery seems to be exceptional. Great stuff. Great stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm... Now that, I would love to see in action. Are we going to get to see it? Arcane, are you going to show us some love? I certainly hope so. Here we go. More Dark Templar. And indeed, why not? They proved so effective so far. Three Thors, three Banshees on the way. That won't help them too much. If this force is applied to anywhere along that defensive line, it is going to slice it into tiny pieces. As CB looks for the scout, Arcane's economy is still looking solid and safe. Mining out that gold mineral spot. LZ Gamer grabs that one. Rebuilds on here. All of those mineral points, all of those resource areas now occupied. But here comes the aggression. Phoenix is to back it up as well, just to get a few snipes off at those Vikings. They won't last too long, but they will provide some anti-air firepower. Arcane's confident, and here he goes. Initial Vanguard annihilated, charging in one, two, and three. Very patient on the side storms. No side storms as of yet, but look at how he's carving through. Massively, massively carving through it right there. Thor's come in from the side. Is that going to be enough? I don't think so. Immortal says absolutely not. I will stand and deliver your money or your Thor. Yes, that Thor's going to die horribly if he's able to bring down the firepower on it. It's a good positioning, though, for LZ Gamer. Strike cannons inflicted on the Immortals, but that ain't going to be enough. The Archons say, yeah, you thought we were useless? No, absolutely not. We're going to have your expansion from you. Yes, we are, and look at it. As the uh, Vanguard, indeed the rear guard of Arcane, uh, does a little bit of damage to that expansion. Look at where Arcane's main forces are. Yeah, you know that thing we blew up about five minutes ago? We're going to take that again. How does that feel? LZ Gamer on the back foot once again. What does he have to counteract that? He really doesn't, honestly. He just doesn't. He doesn't have the units. Honestly, I would expect to see a good game any moment now from LZ Gamer, simply because I don't think he could take him out. Really, he's going in for the final push right here. If he loses these units, he's got a good game. Look at how much he's got in terms of energy. There he goes. Side Storm's ripping through right there. Big firepower. Thor's collapsed. Completely collapsed. Good game. Arcane takes it against LZ Gamer.
Whoa, that was a long one, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah, I think what we've learned there is <laughs> Arcane, pretty much a master of the economy. He really kept it rolling right there, kept the income coming in, and even after losing large numbers of forces initially, he was able to bring down a critical mass and a mixed force as well. He, likes, he builds pretty much everything. Hell, he even throws in Archons there for good measure. So I'm a fan of that.